Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Mohammed, and today I'm going to be talking about the minimum window subsequence. So let's look at it. So let's assume that you are given a string like this, which has many characters, and another search string, which has maybe fewer characters, and you were asked to find the shortest possible window within the bigger one that contains all the characters from the smaller one and in the same sequence. So for example, you should be able to find a substring here that contains A followed by any number of characters and then B and then followed by any number of characters and then E. So let's see if we can find that. We will be using the two pointers idea. So let's assume that we introduce a variable here called i and we introduce another variable here called j and we start iterating through the longer string and the shorter string. And every time we find that there is a match, we move the pointer here to the next. If we don't find the match, however, we still move i to the next character and so on and so forth. So let's start with i at position 0 and j at position 0. Do we have a match? No, in this case we don't. Then we just move i to the next character, which is at position 1, and we keep j as is. And let's check again. Do we have match between character at position i and the character at position j? Yes, we do. It's a and a. Then it time, it's time to move j to the next character. Put it here. Now j is at 1. And i also moves to the next, as always to position 2. So is there a match between character here and character here? No, there is no match. So we keep moving, moving, moving until we reach to position 4. We find that we have B here and we have B here as well. So it's time to move J to the next position, which is at 2. And also I moves to the next one. So is there a match between I, I's position and J position? No. So we keep moving this one all, all, all the way until we find that there is a match, which is going to be here. I is at position 10, J at position 2. We found that there is a match, and then we move J to the next. However, here we'll find immediately that J is actually outside of the bounds of the string. So it's time to stop moving forward, and then we'll see what happens next. So at this specific point, we just had, have to put a pointer or a marker for this position because later when you see that we start getting the substring of the maximum position that we've reached to after going backward, this is going to be our substring, so, uh, minimum window. So let's just save a position here called, let's say, end position equals i, which is here. So what we're going to be doing next is putting j back one step. So j we put it again at position 2. i we put it back at position 10. And we start traversing in this direction. So do we have a match between j and i? Yes, we do. They are both containing the character e and e. So i goes here and j goes here. So is there a match between position the character at position i, character position j, no, there is not. So we keep moving i backward, backward, backward until we reach here. Is there a match between i's position and j's position? Yes, there is. Then it's time to move i backward as well as j. So, and we check again, is there a match? No. So we move i again and we keep j as is. Is there a match? Yes, there is a match. And at this point, we'll find that moving j backward will end up at position minus one which means that we have fully exhausted the array backwards so in this case i as we iterate through it and move it backward every time and at this point we know the old end position we know the current i position and our possible shortest window is the difference between end minus i minus 1 and this minus 1 because we are not interested in this substring but rather in this one because we have moved i one character too much so this is the idea behind it and let's see how we can write code for it okay so let's see how we write the code i wrote it on the side just to make enough space for the code Let's see how we do it. So let's start by declaring our function. Our function is expected to take in a string as the long string, a search string, which is t, 
and it should give us back a string containing the minimum window. In case we fail to find t inside s, then we should just return an empty string. So let's start by declaring our return variable, which is going to be, let's say, string minimum win, let's call it min win, okay? And later will be, sorry, actually, uh, it's better to also initialize it with an empty string, just to make sure that we cover the case where S has no characters at all. So we declared the, the string as the minimum window. Then we need to declare two variables. One variable, which is going to be iterating through our T string, which is going to be int j equals zero. We start at position zero. And if t doesn't have any characters, you will see how we'll cover this case. And another variable that we would be interested in, which we usually declare as integer.max value, but in this case, we don't really need to include the maximum value, but rather the full length of s string plus one. So in this case, I will declare it as the name is min, and I will set it to, let's say, s dot length plus one. It's like the full length of s plus one, such that if we found any substring that contains all characters in sequence of t, it's going to be for sure shorter than this one, because this one is always like the full string length plus one. So any other substring will definitely be at least, like, uh, sorry, at most the full length of the string. So what happens next is we start iterating through all possible characters in S. So for that, we'll just I'll declare a basic for loop. It's going to be something like for i, sorry, for int i equals zero, i less than s dot length, then i plus plus. And what, what I need to do next is that every time I iterate through one character, I check whether the character at that position is equivalent to the character at t position. So I will add an, a short if condition here, which is going to be if s dot character at position i is equal to t dot character at position j if this is the case then what we need to do if you remember if we find the match then we need to move j forward so we put j plus plus and then comes the condition have we exhausted j already and already traversed all possible characters in the array t if it's the case then it's time to go backward so let's do our condition first Let's use a different color for that. So if j is, let's say, greater than or equal, actually equal could be enough. So let's just write it this way. If j is greater than or equal to t dot length, because if we are at the position t dot length, it means that we have exhausted or traversed all possible characters. If it's the case, then it's time to record where we are at position, at the current position of i, and then we start going backward. However, if you remember, we, when we were solving this one, we said that if i is here, we have to get this position. Not really the position of the last character, but the position of the next character. So for, with that said, I will declare in this case int end is equals to i plus 1. So in this case, we have incremented j, so j already went out of bounds of the t-string, so it's time to bring it back. So first thing is j minus minus, so now our character j is going to be here. Our character i is still here because we haven't incremented it yet. And then now we start to go through i, backwards until we reach this point 
or until we fully exhaust our, all the characters in J, then it's time to stop and count how many characters we have, and this is our window. So let's see how we do that. We're gonna create a while loop in this case, while i is greater than or equal to zero. I meant here j, j, because we were sure already that we will always find j because that's we're going backward. It means that we went forward and we found all the possible characters from t in s, and then it's time to go backwards. So in this case, we just need to make sure that j is always greater than or equal zero, because otherwise it means that we went outside, which means that we also found the minimum possible subsequence. So in this case, every time we find that if j, sorry, if t dot character add j, which is exactly the same condition here, is equal to s dot character at i if this condition is satisfied then what we'll be doing is j minus minus it's time to move j one step backwards on the other hand in all cases without any condition i will be moving backwards so in this case i will be always i minus minus until we end this loop. At the moment we end this loop, we will be sure that we have traversed everything and we have found the minimum possible window. However, in this case, let's take this condition. So when i is at this position and j is at this position, we'll find that there is a match between character at j and character at i. Here and here we have a and a and then we'll be moving them. j will be minus minus, so j here is going to be minus one. In this case i is going to be this is position 5. i will be decremented as well, so i will be going to position 4 in this case. And that's a bit more than what we need. So if you remember at the very beginning, we set the end at this posi position, which is going to be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 at position 11. So i is now at position 4, end is at position 11. If we subtract 11 minus 4, it's going to be 7 characters. All right? And in this case, if we start counting the shortest possible window, we'll find that there are only 6. So we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's really important to make always E, which is, sorry, the end, minus I, if we moved it backwards, minus one, which is like, this is too long, let's just reduce it by one. Or easier, because you'll see that we will need this in the next step, just increment i again. So here, that's what I'm gonna do, increment i again. In this case, we're sure that i is at the desired position again. So in this case, since g went out of bounds as well, we need to bring it back, because for the next loop, we'll be starting over, because maybe in the next subsequence, Sorry, in the next iteration, we'll find even a shorter subsequence if we have more characters after this sequence that we have found. So in this case, it's time to bring j back also to the first character, because in the next iteration, this condition will give you out of bounds if j remained at minus one. So what we need to write next is to check whether this length that we have found is the shortest length so far. So for that, I will be checking for if our end position minus our i position is smaller than our minimum length, which is by default more than the length of the string. If it's less than our minimum length, then in this case, first thing to do is to say our new minimum is equal to our end minus i, so that's small enough window, and our result window, which is min win, in this case, our minimum window is going to be equal to s dot sub string, 
starting from the position of the end and all the way until I. And we close this condition here and we actually close the if condition as well which is going to be this one and the for loop as well and what we need to write here at the very end is simply return return our minimum window so if you're not sure that this will also work if we couldn't find a t-string then let's try it out so let's assume that we have here something like uh, a character that doesn't exist here let's say l okay so we'll be traversing through this array let's actually erase all of that just to avoid any confusion We'll be traversing with i here and with j here until a point where sorry i, I removed yeah no it's it's correct so i goes here and j will go here at some point correct but we haven't found yet l so in this case this condition will keep being satisfied like we found a match we move forward have we fully traversed the string t no, we have not. So this condition will not ever be matched in this case. And we keep looping, looping, looping until we fully traverse the S length. So in this case, the minimum window will never be set. It will be set at the beginning as an empty string, and then we return an empty string. So let's assume that in another condition, we have a shorter sequence. So let's assume that our string is like this, and we have more characters. So let me again delete this one and let's say that this t string was also just abe as how it used to be before however in our s string we have more characters here which are just the shortest possible sequence which is like abe so in this case like we have all of these strings and we have sorry all of these characters and we have abe at the very end so in this case when we traverse up till this point and then we go back and then we find everything that we have here i is going to be at this position correct as we have like when we start going forward i was here was going backward sorry going backward j was here and we went backward until we reached to negative and i went here and then we brought i forward again to be again at the i at the at the a character and we brought again j to be here okay and then our outer loop increments i again correct so i starts here again so i is no longer here i is now here and then we keep searching do we have a match no 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 until we reach to this point when i goes here so in this case i is going to be at the last a character in this string j is also going to be here and then we start traversing, they will move together until j goes here and i goes out of bounds here we traverse backwards and then we will find that this is really our shortest possible subsequence so I will be sharing this code with you thank you very much for listening today please leave a comment below if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video